The Supreme Court getting involved in the Mexican border debate after a Border Patrol agent who was in the U.S. shot and killed a teenage boy who was on the Mexican side of the border. Now his parents want to sue for damages. They don't want his name slaughtered throughout the media. We want, to, we want our day in court to show, not just in court, but as well as, as, as the worldwide, that this was a young kid, 15 years of age, who was, like you said, at the wrong place at the wrong time, and was not involved in these other criminal activities that, uh, that some people are saying that he was involved in. The Border Patrol agent says he fired his gun because several people were throwing rocks toward him and other agents. I think all of us that have worn the Border Patrol uniform uh, have had rocks thrown at us. Uh, again, I used, when I was chief, I used to keep a, a rock that was bigger than my fist on my desk. Deadly force is the last option, but uh, a Border Patrol agent can use deadly force in self-defense, in defense of a partner, or de in defense of a, an innocent uh, third party. Joining us now, Jay Seculo, Chief Counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice. Good to see you today, Jay. Hey, Shannon. All right, so this goes to the U.S. Supreme Court tomorrow. They'll have arguments on this. I want to read a little bit of what we have from Mace's legal team saying sure. this. The United States clearly exercises no power or authority over the territory where Hernandez was standing when he was shot. That's part of his uh, attorney's legal brief. So there are a lot of things to unpack here. How does this work when you've got a Border Patrol agent on the U.S. side, you've got a non-citizen Mexican citizen on the Mexican side? So the question is, does the constitutional protections of Fourth and Fifth Amendment privilege and, and the Fourth Amendment uh, dealing with searches and seizures, reasonable searches and seizures, this, this idea, this is a civil case where they're asking for damages. So the question is, does the constitutional right, substantive due process, so to speak, apply to out-of-country non-citizen? And the answer to that, I think, at the Supreme Court, has got to be no, because that would take an act of Congress. A court could not expand constitutional protections outside of our borders, especially to a non-citizen. Mm -hmm. So the issue before the court, and what was specially raised by the Supreme Court in this case, Shannon, is this issue of this expansion of constitutional rights to non-citizens out of country. The incident is, is tragic, but there was an ongoing criminal proceeding uh, matter going on that the agent was dealing with. I'm not saying that the, the young 15-year-old was involved in it. He, was, he, he may well have been an innocent bystander. I don't know the facts of that. No one does except if it was tried. But here's what we do know. Does the law, does the Constitution apply to a non-citizen when that non-citizen is not in the United States? Mm -hmm. So the, the shot that the officer, which he had the authority to, to engage in, took place from the United States and then struck the 15-year-old. Uh, in, in Mexico, so th that raises a whole different question. Yeah. I, I don't think the, a majority of the Supreme Court is going to do that expansion. Uh, and we want to show our viewers at home, we have a photo of the area where this happened. There's a large culvert, yeah. and there had been reports that the boys had been running back and forth, running up to touch the border uh, guardrail yeah. or some kind of uh, enclosure on the U.S. side and running back. Again, there were allegations that there were rocks being thrown, those kinds of things. So you can yeah. see uh, a little bit of the area that we're talking about. But expanding yeah. this, and the court may consider this, of course, when you talk about how this would work in other situations. Are we talking about if they do find that the parents can sue, that law enforcement agents uh, in other parts of the world could potentially be uh, in trouble if they engage with a non-citizen on non-U.S. soil? Yeah, I mean, the idea that you would take constitutional rights and apply them in a civil context to non-citizens not in the United States, to me, seems to be not only a stretch, but it changes the entire dynamic upon which our security structures, our apparatuses are put in place. It impacts not only civil litigation, but it exposes our, our agents, uh, FBI agents, to these what's called Bivens actions. These are these civil lawsuits that arise out of these kind of situations, which have been very limited in scope. When an officer is engaged in an official action to bring a civil case against them, you have to show a well-established legal precedent. It does not exist here. Mm -hmm. But expanding it, as you just said, Shannon, outside the United States to a non-citizen, I mean, where's the line you draw? At what point do you say the Constitution of the United mm -hmm. States doesn't apply to, you know, Zimbabwe? I mean, yeah. to a non-citizen. I mean, it would be absurd if we had an agent down there and an incident were to happen. But this is what the uh, Supreme Court's going to be asked to decide. Eight well, justices, I might yeah. add. Only eight. Yeah. Uh, and it's a tragic situation yeah. for everybody involved. We'll uh, yeah. watch and see how this yeah. plays out for arguments tomorrow. Jay, thank you.